Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings and souls to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence, with our main big series being Kintama and then watching on a rotating factor, Kuroko, which I can say is real because we watch Kuroko. We talk <laughs> Kuroko <laughs> exists. Kuroko exists. And also Jujutsu Kaisen. That might not exist for a bit. We'll see. <laughs> this will yeah, see. very interesting. What's going on with that? I can't wait for the next time we get to talk about it, whether or not we'll be, what we'll be talking about. But uh, yeah, interesting stuff going in that direction. But yeah, and today we're going to be talking about Gintama, which we're going to be talking about episodes 177 to 181, which is the Red Spider arc. And I... We'll be doing the summary for them because Zen is out of whack. <laughs> so I'll see. Yes, uh, today's been a fucking day and a half, dude. I don't think I stopped doing stuff from when I got up in the morning until like seven thirty. Yeah, f- fair enough. I've had a much easier day today because I made sure to have everything prepared <laughs> for today specifically. So I will be doing that. So we're gonna start immediately with episode one seventy seven, which is called "It's Bad Luck to See a Spider at Night," where we begin with an unknown man, uh, which is revealed to be a Slater is Jiraiya, but that said exactly like Jiraiya, but not spelled like the Jiraiya from Naruto, right? Yeah, I pronounced the same, but it's spelled differently from the Naruto version. Okay, cool, because I was like, conf- I was like, yeah, that is Jir- Jiraiya, but that is not the way I expect Jiraiya to look like. <laughs> but Yeah, it- I just, I guess I assumed that that was just how you spelled it, but it might not even be a real name, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, fair enough. If you know, feel free to tell us. But anyway, he's looking out uh, over Yoshiwaru, and he's talking to a courtesan, and he's talking about the uh, the moon of Yoshiwara, and specifically about how... Um... And she asked him, was like, oh, you only came to Yoshiwara after it was liberated? And he's like, no, I've been here before. Uh, and then we get a scene outside of... Now this one I'm going to have... The Suk- Sukoyo, right? That is how you pronounce her name correctly. Sukoyo. Sukuyo. Sukuyo? Okay. I always yeah. get confused <laughs> every single time when it comes to Japanese names. It's a, Even for characters I like. Sukoyo. Uh, Sukoyo is out and about, and as well as her ninja ladies, uh, a dude is running, uh, and she eventually stops him, and they find out that he has what looks like to me to be cocaine, but it's some kind of drug-like substance. It, yeah, it's a drug, but it's it's not explicitly cocaine. They they never say like cocaine, but they found some drugs on him. Uh, things have gone bad. At Yoshiwara, um, as she's kind of leaving, she sees a dude who she suspects is the person who's having the drugs, and all she sees is like a red spider tattoo. None of this, I think, is said. It's all like very silent as they just like walk past each other and they look at each other, and we see a spider going to attack a butterfly and then we get the new op that plays which we'll talk about later but the op as all the gintama ops uh fits in with the current storyline that we're going for the same thing goes for the ed after the op we are cut to a young sukoyo who is bleeding from her face we see her from when she was a child when she decided to create the scars on her face and we see a man tell her about giving up her womanhood um if you wish to become one who protects instead of the one who is protected you have to give up your womanhood and stuff like that and then he talks about like don't worry about it i'll be your sole protector and then he catches on fire (laughs) and we cut to as she's been dreaming this entire time um seta um wakes her up and tells her that you need to get ready for the um for uh gintoki in the group because they're here so go i think he says like no he doesn't say specifically go pretty yourself up but i think he says like go put on your makeup or something and i think she looks at the mirror and says like hey what what's the point of it specifically uh she does that she goes to um request them for help because she talks tells them about specifically about like hey after Hosen died, it's been nice that we're liberated, but he was also keeping away a lot of the crime. So crime rates have actually gone crazy up now 
because a lot of dudes are selling these drugs to the prostitutes, and the prostitutes are specifically getting into drugs because, you know, it's very hard to be a prostitute, even if you're in yeah, an area. Yeah, not, not an easy life. It, it's not an easy life. It's very hard. They they say, they make sure to emphasize that even if we are free, it is still not an easy life to live. Um, so she asked for the help of Gintoki. Um, I think before this, before she comes in, I think the previous lady she says to them like basically she never asked for help but you're the only one that will actually like she'll actually listen to you guys if it's you guys that will ask for help for some reason she's able to ask for help when it comes to you um they decide gintoki says yeah sure we'll help i guess and he says like it'll be very difficult to track down just anybody in yoshiwara who might be selling drugs but she tells him there's a lead, uh, she has a lead, and it's a dude with a spider tattoo as the main primary source. That's a, that's what she believes is the main primary source. So they go on the lookout trying to look to see if they can find some clues about the spider. And then at this point they break apart. I think Kentoki goes to do his own solo research, and then Kagura and Shinpachi are doing their own in the surface world asking the local drug dealers about, hey, what's been going on in the drug scene? <laughs> what's been going on since then? Um, which we'll catch up to them a little bit later. But he, he ends up finding a group of thieves called the the, the Benny Gumato, the Red Spiders, um, where every single me member has red spider tattoos on them. Um, so he says he's going to infiltrate them, and he's going to spy on them, and then he's going to go in there. And then he tells her that, like, hey, don't get involved because you're a woman and all you will do will make things more difficult. Um, she says, that's ridiculous. Also, I'm the one who hired you to do this. I'm obviously going to help. And then somehow they get talking about how this is going to end up in some kind of to to love rue situation because there's a man and a woman. Uh, which is a reference to the Shonen Jump manga, to love rue, which is a harem manga where a lot of the time, where it's it, like all horror manga, the main character will some way get into the woman's uh, boobs and or uh, lower region in some kind of crazy, ridiculous, no nonsensical way that disobeys the laws of physics and everything that you know about humanity in general. It will just happen. Uh, she says, that's ridiculous. That's also stupid. You're being stupid. <laughs> I'll just to prove it, you can go ahead and touch me. You'll see. I don't care. Uh, they end up in a two lover situation almost immediately because I think something breaks it down. He lands face first in her boobs. Uh, he gives him a squeeze to confirm that they are in fact boobs that he has been landed into. And she performs the perfect suplex on him and opens the door to the red spiders. Uh, the red spiders are then looking at them and then he says like, okay... The reason we're here is that we're actually a... <laughs> I think he says, like, okay, what are you guys doing here? You've been caught spying. What are you doing? And then Gintoki says, I've just been getting puff puff. I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's like, that is clearly a lie. You did not come here for that. You were here spying. And then they use the makeup with the idea that they are actually a thief couple. And they're actually here to join the group. Um... They end up believing them, and uh, Sukoyo shows them that she's not someone to be fucked with, and she throws like a bunch of kunai at them, and she says, whatever you think how strong I am, my husband is a hundred times more strong than I am, and then they cut to Kentucky, who has been cut with all the, <laughs> the daggers that she threw. He didn't dodge a single one of them, and just got a full side face of a bunch of daggers to the face. Um, they end up joining the group, and for some reason, they are really into looking for... There's, like, they're going on a raid, um, and they're gonna go steal Kamboko, and then the other side of their group is going to steal... Is gonna, like, do drugs. Um, they end up going on the steal drugs side of it as the other dude... There's, like, a, a like 50 dudes all ready to steal Kamboko, which I think is just fish. Um... And then they realize that these people aren't actually going to lead us to where we are. So they end up going away from them <laughs> and going into where they actually find the faction with the spider tattoos who are doing the drug bits. Um, then at this point, that's when Shinpachi and Kagura are told by the local drug dealers that the person who is behind the red spider things, drugs have actually gotten real bad. Someone has killed every single one of their leaders, like chopped their heads off and have basically united them under one run. And whatever they're investigating, they should really be careful because they're about to investigate something that is really bad. Um, 
Sequoia is uh, trying to look at him. She takes a look at the leader, and the leader immediately realizes that she is uh, looking at him through the spyglass and throws a kunai at her. They start to run away, realizing that things are good, looking really bad. Uh, they team up, and they fight a bunch of the red spider dudes together. I think, actually, it ends right there with them looking to fight him. Sequoia mentions that Gintoki needs to run away, because when she's near Gintoki... For some reason, she's not able to fight at the full force that she usually is able to, because there's something about her that makes her not fight the way that she would usually, which is when, she, which is the way she learned to fight after she gave up on becoming a woman. Uh, Gintoki saves her from something, but then the Jiraiya pops up and basically says, like, you fool, you should have been looking after yourself, and that's where the episode ends, and then we get the ED, which is Wonderful Days, and that is episode 177. Zen, what do you feel? Uh, it was fine. Um, I, I, I didn't really like. Well, first of all, I hate the OP. I think it's awful. Um, oh, really? So that that didn't help. But I don't know. It was just like a. It was a start up to an episode. Um, the boob jokes were not very funny. Not because they were boob jokes, but just because like by Gintama standards, they were not very funny. Um, They've had better. It was boob literally. Jokes. It was. It was. It was the same boob joke as you get in any other anime. Like, oh no, I touched him, and then and then get punched. Like, you know, it's the same as, as anything else. Yeah. Wasn't that funny? Uh, I thought the premise of the Jiraiya dude coming back was interesting. Um, he is cre like sufficiently freaky looking. He he's is a gross little a gross little man. Um, he's a very gross man. He's a super gross little guy. Uh, it was. It was fine. It. it it's the weakest one of the arc, but I mean, it's mm. the start, so. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what'd you end up not liking? Is it just the song for you that you don't like? Uh, the song is, like, okay, but it feels like it's clearly not designed to be an opening because it just cuts off. Oh, yeah, that part about it? Yes, that that part <laughs> yeah. I actually super don't it like. It doesn't, like, it doesn't, like, end at a natural stopping point. No, they, just, they, like, they picked a very weird point stops. for it. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of a shame because I do actually like the theme that they got going for it. Like, there's some specific shots in it that I really like. Like, I like the shot of Gintoki as a kid, and he's fighting. Uh, it's like showing him on, like, a war battle, and then it cuts to, like, it's in his eyes, and he's actually, like, um, with Shinpachi and Kagura kind of, like, driving away from that. I like, like, those parts of it, but yeah, when you think of it like an actual OP, it does end very abruptly. Like, it kind of just goes... Uh, that actually kind of bothered me throughout the entire arc, is that it seems like they just picked the, the weirdest part to cut the OP at. Um, yeah, it, it just stops. It's so weird. Like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Super dry. It, it feels, like, cheaply made because of that. Like, it's, like, low-quality anime, like, AMV. Yeah, even when I was looking through some of it, I was like, yeah, that's weird. They actually do just stop it there for some reason. There's no, like, crescendo end to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I ended up liking. Funny enough, I'm a huge fan of horror manga. So really, when they started making fun of horror mangas by saying like this is literally this is gonna create a two love rue situation between us, and then he they literally just lifted a joke straight from one of those mangas to make their point, saying like no, they like like it's it's funny because you say yeah it is joke because it is literally anything from it. But that's why I ended up liking it, because they literally just took it straight from it and just did it again. And I'm always a fan of seeing a suplex in general. And uh, I've read a lot of horror manga, so I have become... That's like my bread and butter for me. So when I see it, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> great stuff. Um, I agree that there have been better boob jokes here in the past, but I did like when uh, he goes up to it and they're doing the whole back and forth. Even though he, it's very clear that he's in the boobs, he still kind of goes for, like, a very quick, like, tiny squeeze for him. And he goes like, oh, man, I'm so screwed on this. <laughs> and then he finally gets hit by it, and I thought that was great. But otherwise, yeah, I uh, I can see how this could be the weakest. Definitely coming up to some of the other ones. It's a setup, but it's also a weird setup because it has, uh, for how uh, serious a turn... Because I want to say this is basically the end of the comedy until 181 we don't get any more of pretty it. much yeah this is the end of it this is the end bit that they have there and then this is it until we get to 181 it's basically gone um 
it's interesting for sure. It does end up making it feel a little bit weird from it. I also did like just seeing them like team up and have a fun interactions with each other in there. And I like the kind of setup that they have for Jiraiya. But yeah, I can definitely see it being like a, a fair. It's a start for it for sure. It's, it feels a little bit weird. But it only feels, it also feels weirder once you actually get into the actual arc. And then it just, from that point on, it's just not, it doesn't, it doesn't let up. There's like no time to breathe, basically, <laughs> from the next episode forward. It is all serious business time. So yeah, let's uh, go on to the next episode, which is episode 178. Um, once you're entangled in a spider web, it hard, it's hard to get out. Um, so we start, we're going in from where it was previously, where Gintoki is being hit, uh, by Jiroi Jiraiya's caught up to Gintoki. Uh, Gintoki's hit, like, with a buttload of kunai at close range from a single attack. Sukoyo's heads, um, she ends up trying to help and then she ends up getting struck as well. Um, they fight for a bit, uh, Jiraiya slams Gintoki into a wall and goes to stab him, but then Gintoki takes out one of the kunai that he had on him, and then f deflects it back, which is really cool. Um, they continue to fight each other, and, uh, Jiraiya has the clear upper hand on everything that they got right here. Um, um... Shinpachi and Kagura are back with Hinawa and Seita, and they're talking about how um, Jiraiya was the original leader of the Haikya, which is the, the ladies that they have there, and I think they give a little bit more of a, his backstory about how he was with, I think, the ninja group from what you, the one that Sachan's in, but then he was removed from it because he did a grave... He, had, he, had, he did some kind of grave sin, and he was kicked out of it. Um... They get back to the fight. Um, this is when Sequoia finally realizes that Jiraiya is her master. Um, and Jiraiya like reveals that his face... Because when you, whenever we see the, the clips of her master, he has like a burnt face. And he reveals that basically the face that he currently has is basically a mask. And he starts peeling off pieces of his mask face. Oh, it's so gross, It's too. so oh, gross. Nasty. When he slowly picks it away... Oh, uh, it's... <laughs> And, and then he's got the nasty giant eye. Yeah, he has the huge giant eye, and his real face is just covered in scars, and he starts talking down to her about how, like, someone has... He, he refers to her a lot as the moon, and he's basically saying, someone has defiled my moon. Uh, what happened to you? You were so beautiful, and now look at you. You are not the same that you once were, which is basically what he wants is to her to go back to the way she was before she met Gintoki and his group. Um, they also talk about what happened to Jiraiya back in the day. They talk about Jiraiya disappeared when there was a giant fire in Yoshiwara, and that's when she lost him. Um, and that's when he considered her to be the most beautiful, was, like, right when he lost her. Um, and he reveals that basically he faked his death, because that's where he wanted her to end up being, is that he wanted her to live in that kind of moment, and to be... It was like the fi his final piece of art. It's He says this, it's very creepy, by the way, the way he describes this in general. The way he says he was just kind of building her up to be a very specific way, and the only way that to solidify it was to make it look like he had been killed, and specifically killed in a way to protect her. Um, he decides to, he attacks her and like hit, like grabs her by the throat, um, Gintoki ends up fighting him, and then he immediately, like, is able to fight back on him very easily. He starts fighting from the air where it looks like he's floating, and then she reveals to him that they're basically caught in his web, and there's just a buttload of wires everywhere. Um, and that's how he's able to, like, that's how he's able to kill a lot of his dudes is by just setting up wires everywhere, and he set up those wires with the first initial kunais that he, th that he threw. Um... Uh, and then they attack each other. I think at this point, I think he might be trying to leave or go away. And he ends up being caught by, um, he like stabs him in the back and he ends up going to, like, he, he goes for the killing blow next. And then as he's about to like stab him to kill him, 
Um, Sequoia uh, throws a kunai at his hand. He's able to stop, and he falls into the harbor, and he falls bleeding. Um, Jiraiya says, whatever, he's dead. It's fine. We can move on. And he takes Sequoia. Uh, then we reveal that there has been someone reading Jump this entire time. It's Hattori, a.k.a. the Jump Ninja from so many... This is this is maybe close to 100 episodes back is the last time we saw this man. Oh my god, I forgot to mention that about the OP. That was another thing that I was watching it. And I was like, it's funny to me how Gintama OPs show all these characters that I'm like, when the fuck is the last time I've seen these guys? And the ones that popped into my head were uh, the friend of Gintoki's who, ha- who like owns the spaceship company. Yes. It's He's been a very long time. And I'm like, when, when is the last time we've seen that guy? And then the Jump Ninja was the other one. I was like, is this guy even in the show anymore? And then he shows up in these episodes. Yeah, yeah, it's been a very long time since we've seen either one of them. But then, just, yeah, Jump Ninja is here. I had the same reveal of, like, holy shit, it's the Jump Ninja. How long has it been? <laughs> but he's here, and he's reading Jump, and he goes, this isn't my problem. Yeah, not my problem. I'm just here reading Jump, and it cuts to he has saved him. Um, Kintoki wakes up in Yoshiwara, and he says, like, hey... I'm pretty sure I would have dead who saved me. And then we cut to uh, Hattori, who is in a ugly girl. This is how they describe him. Don't come at me for this one. He is in an ugly girl cabaret, and he talks about, like, he only really likes ugly women. <laughs> he says, he he gets really, really, really into the fact that it's like, nah, it's pretty women, whatever. They're whatever. But you, my fugly, you are truly <laughs> my number one. And he gets attacked by Gintoki, and he goes, okay, you're going to have to explain to me what the fuck just happened. Um, uh, and then in an abandoned warehouse, we look at uh, Jiraiya and Sukoyo, and Jiraiya basically says, I'm going to set fire to Yoshiwara. I don't think he says that specifically, but he says everything that you love. That's the plan. That's the plan. But he, the way he says it is very much everything that you've grown to love, I'm going to get you back to the way you were. And the only way that's going to happen is that everything that uh, you love is going to die. And this is going to be your fault because you were not strong enough um, and stuff like that. General creepy vibe type dude stuff. And that is the episode. How you feel, Zen? Uh, this one was better. I like this one a lot. Uh, the dude's super creepy, super nasty, gross guy. Uh, it was really funny that the jump hemorrhoid ninja came back yeah. <laughs> and, and was helpful just out of nowhere. Because I always associate him with Sachan. Yeah. Because they're always in the stuff together. Yeah. And she's not around at all for this. It's just him. Um, the bit where he is at the club of ugly women and he's talking about this woman's face. And he's like, were you attacked by multiple giant generals? <laughs> what are these valleys in your face? And he's talking about it like it's amazing. And then Gintoki just flies in from off screen and kicks him out of the frame. It's a really good joke. Yeah. He, he's also <laughs> going real deep into this ugly girl. He says, yeah, you're like a real wreck. Can I, put, can I stick it in? That's what he says at one point. Can I stick it in? Yeah. But see, he says, can I stick it in? And then he says, he, he specifies he's referring to plugging an electrical outlet into the holes in her face. <laughs> uh, real, su- real, um, real good stuff. <laughs> it's the only, I guess I lied, there is some more comedy bits, but from this point on, there shouldn't be any from anymore. They don't even go to his classic hemorrhoid bit, which I could have swore... There was a moment where I thought, like, I bet this is where it act up, and it doesn't. I'm like, okay, I guess they're serious about this. <laughs> the His only reoccurring gag is that he has hemorrhoids, and he does not get them at all at this arc at all. Um, yeah, he's like a very, very serious character, uh, this whole arc, really. Except for this bit. Except for the... this bit. He has a new bit, which I think uh, is better than the hemorrhoids, which is that he's really down with ugly women. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's a very funny bit that he's just, like, super into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up liking this one uh, a lot. Jiraiya has, in the short amount of time that I've had Jiraiya here, he is quickly, he quickly went onto my shit list of, oh my god, I need to see this guy fucking destroyed. Because yes, I hate this dude. There he, was at one point, you know the, uh, 
the low tier god video where he's like, you should kill yourself now. <laughs> that was me to this guy. I was like, I hate this fucking dude so much. Yeah, he, he comes on strong. There's no like... You know, usually with a lot of the villains, there's a little bit of a build-up and when, like, until they've the, decided from... The, the, like, there's a build-up to show how, just how fucked up they are. He's fucked up from the start. Immediately, yeah. And I'll talk about it later on when we get into some of the later episodes, but I almost think that's a detriment to a, this arc. A little bit, yes, where he's he's gone off the deep end, and I think it ends up meaning something a little bit more but we'll talk we'll discuss that a little bit more but i I see where you're coming from it but it's very hard he's even harder to the 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 previous dude to yoshiwara he was also bad um he somehow doesn't look as bad as this guy no no not at all no yeah if, if this dude is just the worst yes and the the way that he like has her up in the web and he's like talking about it like the just the weird way he talks about like yeah raising her and baking her into a very specific way it's just all creepy and it makes my skin yeah crawl. i don't remember if it was this episode or the next it's the one, next one but uh when he's when he's got the knife and he's like poking it into her scar, I was like, I hope this guy gets fucking murdered. That's in the like, next one, yeah. But the the way he's ugh. like torturing her and trying to, which you see why later on. That doesn't excuse. Let me be very clear. Does not excuse him at all. But oh, you do no, understand him. Yeah. In general, we're on fuck this guy. But they do try and be like, well, how did he get this way? And then when you hear how he got this way, you're like, well, okay. That doesn't change a lot, but I at least understand a little bit more of him. But goddamn, is he just like skin crawly evil fuck dude? This, this is such an issue that he ne- I think he needed to die this arc, or I would be in constant fear that he would come back. Yeah, if he didn't die in this arc, I would I would be angry if he didn't die in this arc. This guy's yes. the worst. Where if he came back, because the reason is okay. So we're gonna talk about like the idea of hero killing people. But the reason is is that he needs to die because I can't imagine that if he's allowed to stay as crazy as he is and he comes back. It's similar to how, like, the Joker, when he comes back, he does, like, something even worse and he's more fucked up. He's already starting at a level that is extremely fucked up and weird. If he comes back again, it has to be double that. And I don't think I could handle it. I honestly think I could not handle this dude at even twice his crazy range that he is at this moment right here. So... Uh, yes, very good build up on him. The way he fights is actually kind of interesting with the, the with the spider web stuff and all the things going on here. And let's go on to the next episode, uh, which is episode one seventy nine, which is called "It's Irresponsible." No, it's it's the irresponsible ones who scary when pissed. Um. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, basically, Zanzo explains Jiraiya's past about how he burned his face specifically. Like he's, they talk about like the ninjas about how like okay, he was a ninja, but he's not like a ninja that we know him. He was basically like a samurai ninja because he was loyal to whoever he was, and his loyalty caused him to. Uh, burn his face so that he could go on like secret missions that would mean that no one would ever be able to recognize his face again so he burned it so that that fucked up looking face that he has he did that to himself yes and see at first i thought it was um when he like supposedly died for her i thought because he they show it him like walking into fire and i was like oh it's his gross creepy wound Nope, he did that shit to himself. Yes, he did that. He was like that before her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before she existed, he was like this. Uh, great. And one moment, because my work just literally texted me saying, uh, uh, update uh, for no. tomorrow. God damn it. Okay, sorry about that. We're back. We're 100% back. We're back at Dinosaur Story. What were we talking about, Sen? <laughs> His, fa- uh, yours, uh, his, about, fu- his fucked up uh, face. His nasty, nasty guy rolling into episode 179. We were like right about to start 179. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, we talked about how his face, he did that to himself the way that it looks. Yeah, um, his, he was his nasty burn, self burn. Yes. Because he's a weird, uh, like, he's loyal fucking... ninja, which he... you're not supposed to be. No. 
Um, and then he's talking to the Shogun, and then finally he talks about the, his actual idea of what he's doing this, and then we finally see a look into his uh, fucked up psyche, which basically is is that the way he actually hunts, he's a he says 100%, I'm a predator, but the way other spiders do it is that they get people into their nest, and then they eat them. I don't do that. I feed them. I basically make it so that I'm at the weakest that I could ever be. And then that's when I gorge myself on the thing that I'm about to eat in my web. And then he decide he's saying this all to the Shogun. And then he says, like, today, the thing I fattened up and uh, made my prey is you. So he kills all the other ninja dudes who are in... Also, I should say before this, the Shogun specifically asked him to kill all his family and friends as well. Um... It was one of the things he did, but the the thing that he did that is what's caused him to end up leaving the ninja clan himself because he was told the task. I forget the exact reason why. It was like they were looking the potential. Like when the Amanto showed up, they wanted to rebel back. They didn't want to like um, they they basically wanted to be like the anti foreigner. So he was in. Yeah, they his, didn't want us to surrender. They didn't. They would have fought to the last thing. So instead, he decided to. They they needed to wipe him out, and there was only one person who would take on the job of killing literal friends and family, and it would be him. Um, so he does it, and then he goes to kill the Shogun after he does the thing that he that will lead to his exile, and that is when he actually gets met by Zanzo's dad, which is the old man from way back, the from the kick the can thing. But this is him in his youth, uh, and he shows him attacking him, and basically he anticipated that he was going to kill the Shogun. So he decided to um, meet him up there, and then he ends up getting injured in the legs here, and this takes him out. Um, uh, even with them basically having him on like the um, on the ropes and all that, he's able to escape. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Let me just quickly text lit. Let me just quickly text. Sounds good. And that's my cue to say no more text for him <laughs> until I have to work today. <laughs> Leave me alone, please. Smiley face. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, Classic work email. <laughs> yeah, except for To text. whom it may concern, uh, my shift does not begin until... Yeah, well, she is a very nice lady, but for, she doesn't know that I do this, but at the same time, come on. <laughs> Yeah, literally yeah. i was i was unavailable this entire time until now and it's only now that when i actually need something to uh, at least i gotta thank you for doing it so quickly uh, anytime i say begrudgingly <laughs> <laughs> anytime through gritted teeth they are so lucky i give a shit <laughs> it's so it's so infuriating when you care <laughs> anyway um, so yeah, they weren't able to kill him and he was able to escape and he, uh, Zanzo talks about like, yeah, I've been trying to, uh, my dad was trying to look for him and basically because I'm now the lane dude in my ninja clan, it's my job, but the dude's a fucking wacko. So I don't want to fight him. <laughs> I'm not looking for He's revenge. Like, dude's a fucking freak, man. Yeah, he ba that basically goes like that that uh, that uh, that joke. I didn't come here to get low diff by Shanks. That's basically what he says about this guy. I didn't come here to fucking fight this wacko Jiraiya, and that's the end of it. Um, he's telling Gintoki all this. We cut back to him in the spider webs, and he says like, "All right." I'm going to burn this entire place down, and then we'll be good. Um, she tries to bargain with him, saying, like, please, I'll leave. I'll... No, she doesn't do that yet. That comes a little bit later. But basically, he says, uh, let's light this bitch up, and he lights the bitch up. Um, everyone is back. Basically, Zanzo says, like, this isn't any of my business. Um, and that's it. And then the place catches on fire. Uh... Gintoki says to Kagura and Shinpachi that you guys help put out the fires. I'm going to go take care of this guy. And both Shinpachi and Kagura are like, you're injured. You shouldn't do it. But then they stop themselves from saying anything more because they notice that he's fucking pissed. Um, and he has a flashback remembering his teacher. And he basically says, I will never forgive uh, Jiraiya's actions as a mentor. And he goes to go find Jiraiya. 
Um, he starts, Dryas starts lighting up even more threads. Um, he notices that some of them are being cut, which is Shinpachi and Kagura are running around the rooftops cutting off threads. Um, and he ends, and then Hinawa herself from her wheelchair tells everyone to go. He tells, she tells the Hakia to put out the flames. Uh, while the Hakia are distracted by putting out the flames, Jiraiya's gang go to attack her. Because she only had like one ninja on her side to protect her. But now that she's free and open, she's they're going to attempt to kill her or or worse. Um, but then Zanzo arrives to protect her. And basically, early on, he said that the ninja are loyal to the Shogun. But that's a lie. The Shogun just pays the most. So that's why we're with him. And that's... That's the loyalty of a ninja, whoever can afford us. That's who we go with. Um, Zanzo arrives and says basically, basically like, hey, how much to, how much are you offering for me to be your guardian here? And basically she offers him VIP cards to the hostess clubs. Uh, to the hostess club that he was in earlier. And he says, uh, bingo. I guess pretty <laughs> girls are cool. <laughs> he goes, cha-ching. <laughs> and... <laughs> He goes, pretty girls are pretty cool too, and he fucking destroys these dudes. Yeah, absolutely obliterates these dudes. Which is funny, because he always was a character that I thought was... I guess he's fought Kentucky before, so I don't know why I thought this. Mm -hmm. But I was always like, this dude is a fucking, like, rando scrub guy. But no, he's really strong, actually. Yeah, actually, if you recontextualize that, if you remember the fight he had with Kentucky, he should have died! <laughs> Mm -hmm. this is the case of like in a serious arc with serious times on the line and in this case the serious lines for him is access to your ugly girl cabaret the man who puts up and this is the part where i was like okay this is where the hemorrhoids kick in no nah, they never do this man is full business he's ready to fucking fuck shit up and he does and it's actually really cool <laughs> um this is where now Sukoya is uh, begging with Jiraiya to please stop. Um, he tells her that I'll abandon them, I'll leave them, I'll go back to being the, the way that you want. Um, just please leave them alone. And um, this is when he starts just fucking hitting her. And he talks about, like, no, I don't think you understand here. Like, then he explains basically what was told in the backstory that the way he sees it is that she's the prey. Uh, she's the feast that he's been building up this entire time that he's looking ready to um, eat because it's almost time to feast because he is she has grown to almost the way that he wants it to. Um, but you're not there yet. I need you to go back to the way you are. And then he talks about, like, you still aren't the way that you are, so I need to do something. I need you to become... You're not strong enough. You're not strong like I am. I need you to become strong. How do I make you strong like me? And that's when he starts putting the knife to her face and says, like, what if I just flail your skin? What if I just, like, make you look like me? Will that be enough for you to be as strong as I am and you'll become me, basically? Um, and while he's doing this, it looks like he's ready to put the dagger directly into her eye. There's, like, a close-up shot of her eye as it looks like... You hear, like, the sound of blood gashing. Um... But no, it was actually Gintoki and his um, sword, and he strikes his hand, and he tells her to uh, get your stinking hands off that woman, and it ends with him rescuing her from the uh, from the web that she's currently trapped in, and they share like a hug as the episode ends. And we cut to uh, Wonderful Days playing, which is the E.T., and this is the part where I said, this is 100% that joke of the serious arc. <laughs> Where the where like do you, you remember that joke that's been around on Twitter where it's like um I think they usually say this about Jujutsu Kaisen it was like oh yeah all the characters like living it up in the ED meanwhile the previous episode was like them borderline oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all like bleeding out on the floor and then the ED is like dancing having fun yes this isn't that yeah. far out it, 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 it isn't that much but that that with the the happy song kicks in I was like oh shit okay it was like. <laughs> It was like literally like a all right so it, ed time let's go and um the episode actually ends with um a Gimpachi sensei which someone brings in a question saying like hey i try and draw naruto and i really suck at it do you have any tips about like not um sucking at drawing naruto and he goes like um 
You should be asking us to Mr. Kishimoto, right? You why, why are you asking me about how to draw Naruto? <laughs> the fuck do I know about drawing Naruto? <laughs> and that's where it actually ends before we get into the next episode. But that is 179. How do you feel, Zen? Super good. Uh, this was definitely the point where I was like, this dude has to die. He's gotta die. I He's hate him so die. much. I need him to die. He's, He's gotta, gotta die. die. He needs um, to die. He, he I did. literally put out <laughs> this dude. To die. I literally put out a tweet saying, I need this guy fucking dead already. Yeah, I need this guy as a corpse ASAP. Yes, uh, 100%. He's the fucking worst. Uh, Gintoki's hero moments, they're always cool. There's something, I don't know, because it happens all the time, but there's something special about when Gintoki gets his shit pushed in by somebody and then he shows up later all bandaged up and fights them. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, especially in this yeah. one. He stabs him with the wooden sword. Yeah. He throws the wooden sword like through his hand. He uh, does. Fucking sick. And um, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And like uh, uh, the whole bit where he uh, cuts her down is very sweet. Yeah, um, the, the hug that they share is very is a very nice of yeah. like, all right, it's okay. It goes back to the idea of like having someone to protect, and this is actually one hundred percent showing the idea of like having someone. And this goes on to the actual episodes they go on the burden sharing the burden with someone. Which is helping them out when they're at their absolute worst, and he's doing that here by literally shouldering her, shouldering her, and like giving her like an okay, it's all right. I'm here to help at least for the time being. It's a very sweet moment, and I can understand. I think it was at this point because I've been told for a little bit. It was like, yeah, this one ended up sh starting a lot of ships, and I was like, oh, really? I wonder why. And then when it got to this part of the episode, I was like, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. One hundred percent, I get it. I feel they, like... they definitely lean into it for they, sure. They do. Um, they do pretty hard. Yeah, because it's not like uh, Sachan where he's like horribly irritated by her the whole time. He's very much like more stoic with her than he is with yes. his other admirers. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that much. With with um with Sachan, he goes, "Listen, you bitch," and then that's basically all his, her his interaction with her. Yeah, it's, a, it's literally just like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, we're two steps away from him saying, get away from me, whore, and she going, oh, please tell me more. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's like comically bad. Yes. But uh, uh, he, he's very sweet with uh, Sequoia, actually. Yes, it, it, it does remind me a bit of that bit in the Benny Zucker arc where there's a moment between them and uh, Tay, but I feel like there's definitely, a, it's definitely leaned in way more. In this specific Speaking arc. of the Benny Zakra arc, we're not at this yet. <laughs> but when when the episode ends with an advertisement to Benny Zakra, I just couldn't help but flash back to when uh, we were both on Twitter and we were like, oh man, uh, I really liked Benny Zakra. I don't understand why people don't like it. And everyone was like, oh, you'll see. I'm starting to get it. Because <laughs> they keep bringing it back? <laughs> they just bring it up all the time. It's so funny, though. It's funny to me every single time. <laughs> and this time specifically yeah, when they bring it it's up. It's just constantly. They're like, oh, by the way, Benny's here's Zuck. some new Gintama special content. It's another adaptation of Benny's Akira. But this one was funny because, uh, okay, we'll get to it eventually. But yes, I, I can kind of understand it a little bit, even though I still really do like that arc. I do um, like it too. It's it's still really good, but it's just so funny how hard they push that shit. Yeah, it is really funny, especially because they were originally pushing it as a joke, and then when the joke became real, you're like, wait, what? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> this is too much. But yeah, uh, this episode was fucking fantastic. Um, a lot of, I think uh, from this point on, a lot of my notes, I think for literally for the first time, in a very long time, this next episode that we're coming up to, I literally had to put down my notes in a Word doc, which is not something I had done in a very long time. Just because as I was watching it, I was like, God damn, I think I actually have to put my thoughts down because I watched this a day early. I'm like, God damn, it's not going to be fresh in my mind. I have to actually write this down just so I can remember it from when we get there. But yes, the build up to this one has been fantastic. Uh, the building of this dude, Jiraiya, to be just, like, fucking insane. Like, when, when they cut to him, like, showing, like, the way he burned himself, and the thing that he burned himself with was, like, a hot metal pipe <laughs> of what... Yeah. Huh? I was like, oh my god, you're... Fuck, you're actually literally fucking insane. Also, we should mention this, uh, his reveal that... 
you can tell that this is a real ass reveal because it came with a song. <laughs> it had lyrics yep. in it. And I was like, yeah, that is a uh, that that's to tell you this is a dude to not be fucked with. Um, but yeah, I really liked it when Shimpachi and Kagura look like they're going to say like, no, we'll help you on this one. And then they can see that they don't need to because he's just like unbearable levels of pissed right now. Like when they show that brief flashback of him as like a kid and he's like with his master and then his like literal thing he says is like, I'll die before I let that son of a bitch call himself her master. (laughs) Like this is this this is gone beyond anything. It's literally hit like a fresh wound at this point. That's how uh fuck yeah, things are. Yeah, right later on now. when they when they fight, uh it's like you he, when the the final blow of it, which I don't think is it's in the next episode. Uh, yes, it is. But the final blow of it is like the angriest face I've ever seen him have. Yeah, and I think it's okay, you know, we need to just go into it. This episode yeah, was really good. The next one. Yeah. But this next one <laughs> is where we're going to be doing a lot of our talking for this arc, I feel. But this is episode 180. The more precious the burden, the heavier and more difficult it is to shoulder it. And this is also the part where I noted whenever they have a title like this, it's never good. <laughs> it never leads down a happy path. And this is true. Um, we the episode actually starts with a flashback of the war, um, and they show a it's like dead bodies everywhere. Crows is like a bunch of dudes are on the floor dying, bleeding out, swords and everything in the ground. And we see a kid Gintoki as he is eating a what looks like to be a rice ball, um, and then his master shows up and he says like. Um, it looked like, to me, like someone was saying that something here, there was a demon in in the building. There was like a demon here, but I can see here that it's uh, it's actually just like a cute little demon. That's what he like calls it. He's like, no, you're a demon, but you're like a cute little guy. Yeah, you're just a little dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gintoki goes to fight him, and he talks about like, yeah, single child stripping corpses to protect himself, huh? And then he goes to remove a sword, and the sword is so fucked up that it literally still has blood. It's like rusted. Because it hasn't been shaved down at all. It's like never basically seen... It's... Only thing it's ever seen is battle. It's never been cleaned anything like that. Uh, His master then decides to say... He throws him his clean sword and basically says... If you actually want to learn how to use it... To like properly use it to defend and protect... Then you can find me. Um, And that's when we cut to uh, the OP... And then the beginning of the actual episode. Um, So... Mm. the Kentucky and Jiraiya are fighting each other uh, I should also mention that specific flashback was in black and white um, there's going to be a lot of color stuff that I'll try and make note of it when it happens but either way they're fighting each other um, uh, and this is when he says to her that um, that you're basically being an idiot because you tried to shoulder your burden. Like, he sh- that she should have shared with him specifically stuff like this. And that's when he talks about, like, when... Um, when you're tearing up with an ugly face, that you should, you know, cry. And then when you're laughing, I'll be there to also be laughing and stuff like that. It's, it's a very nice and very good moment. But he's like, when you're laughing so hard, your stomach hurts. I'll be, like, right there laughing just as hard. And that's how it should be. Uh, When you carry someone's burdens and that you're actually with them the entire time, sharing the good and the bad with them. Um, The Master Jiraiya's there and he's like, that sounds like a lord of bullshit to me. So they end up fighting each other. Um, Gintoki says, like, you can do whatever the hell you want to the Shogun or any of the other lords. But you betrayed your student, someone that was supposed to... someone You betrayed a student, someone who believed in you since, since she was a kid. Someone that you were supposed to, like look after and walk their burdens you're fucking dead you're so dead you're so unbelievably dead you don't what, even know what does he say he says like uh spill your rotten guts when you die <laughs> i'm like yeah, yes please he is. kill him you made please. her your prey uh you don't deserve to call her your you don't deserve to be her master you don't deserve you don't deserve her to call her as a student he's like the the full on dress down of this dude get lost <laughs> He tells him to leave. Uh, Don't ever show your face around her, you sick son of a bitch. Um, So he goes to fight, and this is when he goes. The dude Jiraiya is basically going like, "Uh, I'm in trouble. Because I look at his eyes, and that's not the eyes of a meal. 
my threads are literally shaking. My weapon is scared <laughs> because the, there's something in my web and it is not prey. It is it is not my prey or something for me to eat. That is a that is a predator that has entered the site. Uh, and then we see have like this cool shot of like a spider representing Kentucky inside the web, and it's like this giant fucking huge um, spider in his back. And then Gatoki says, like, you're not caught. I'm not caught in your web. You're in my web. You're not leaving here alive. Spill your rotten guts as you die. Like, literally, as he, then they start fighting each other. Um, uh, Jiraiya starts taunting him, saying, like, you can't catch me with those injuries. You're too injured. Um, and he's fighting it out with Gintoki. Um, uh... Gintoki blocks all the attacks and starts running for the door. Jiraiya leaps towards him, um, but it was his plan to confine his movements. And Jiraiya attacks with a kunai, but Gintoki ties the wire around his arm and basically, like, traps him in there and gets him... In, like, the Gintoki has a like, kunai in his arm, but he also has the wire. He uses the wire, he puts it around himself and makes it so that Jiraiya can't escape him anymore and he can't run around anymore. Um... And he starts just like, uh, he starts just like hitting him repeatedly, like full front, bop, 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 punching him. Um, and then his Bukoro, he starts to remember his words about how a sword is meant for protecting your soul. Um, he breaks Jiraiya's arm and leg, but Jiraiya strikes back, um, uh, hitting him in the arm and the leg as well. Uh, Gintoki continues to confront him about being unable to bear his student's weight, remembering his own teacher. Um, and he says basically to him that, that the thing that he kept saying to Sequoia was specifically that you are weak. Um, and he says, she's not weak. You're weak. All that bullshit that you were talking about, um, you didn't need, uh, you didn't want anyone to be with you. It was because you couldn't handle the idea of losing them. Basically, everything you did was to prevent yourself from feeling any sort of pain, and that's the difference between you and her, is that she's someone who's willing to take in a lot of that pain and experience that pain and actually still be with those people, but you're not like that. He basically says, you're a coward, and if you're a coward, a coward like me can easily beat you because a coward can beat a coward. Um, and he fucking headbutts him in the head, <laughs> and that's where the fight ends after a headbutt. Um, uh, then Zanzo arrives after he stands over him. Uh, no, it looks like, uh, after the headbutt, uh, Jiraiya goes up, um, and he has a kunai and he's getting ready to stab Gintoki in the neck and Gintoki's saying, you need to just give up. And he says, I'm not going to give up. Only I can kill myself. Um, and that's when Sukuyo finally throws a kunai at his neck and he starts to bleed and he dies and he basically goes oh great it's over um zanzo arrives and he talks about jiraiya's past um about how he used to be someone who was actually noble um and he was supposed to be like oh he was part of like this royal family and he was basically the idea was that he was going to eventually be like this great person but all the neighboring clans were like, we actually need to stomp this dude out before he ever gets to that point. So they kill his entire family, but the only thing that survives is his younger sister. And they use his younger sister as a way to get them to work for them. So now he's forced to work with people that are less than savory. Um, so he works for him and he does it with the idea that his sister will survive and they'll be fine. Um, and he becomes a monster for her specific sake. And it, get, it drives him to the point where the sister is unable to handle with the fact that what happened to her brother was basically because he's only doing this specifically because I'm alive. So she decides to kill herself by throwing herself off a cliff and seeing if that will set him free. And that will free him from the torment that he's basically created. Um, doesn't work out, but it does leave him basically a shell of a person and it leaves him to such it leaves him in such a way that what he wants to do is actually he wants to kill himself and that's what he was actually training Sequoia to do eventually is that he always his end game was always that she would be strong enough and she would kill him um that's what he wanted at the end of the day he's always talked about that beforehand about like only i can kill myself or something like that and that was the idea is that he wanted her to get to the point where she was like him and she was able to kill him 
Um, and yeah, and he's just like all fucked up. And at this point, um, Sequoia picks him up and he says, and she says, basically, why did you never tell me any of this? If you had actually told me this from the start, maybe things wouldn't have gone the way that they did. Um, and she takes him out to go see the moon. Um, so she can, so he can see the moonlight before, before he dies or just like hang out with him and talk about his specific burdens she's real she feels kind of sad because she's those you never shared the the things that you were going through but maybe if you had maybe we could have avoided this entire thing and you didn't have to go out the way that you did um and as she's leaving him outside and they're looking at the moon she sees he sees her his sister and her um this entire time throughout the entire arc he's specifically been talking about the moon about how the moon is beautiful and how it looks like and sequoia has always been talked about about being the moon so he's able to see why she is the moon and the way the why she's so as beautiful as she is because she shines in the darkness and she can definitely see it here as you see the moon here and then it ends with gintoki and um ninja man talking um, talking to each other and he talks about specifically about how the student's role is to eventually get to the point where they can carry their master, where basically they can get to the point where they never have to rely on them and instead they can help them out in the way that they wanted to. Um, uh, Zenzo says that he was never able to do that with his father and he was never able to do that. And then Gintoki says, yeah, me too. And that's where the episode ends. After Kentucky says, "Like, yeah, I was never ever, I was never able to do the thing that she's doing now," and that's where the episode ends. And that's episode one eighty. Zen, how do you feel? Really good, crazy good. Uh, the fight is insane. The shots when it goes purely black and white, and he's just got. Uh... Why am I blank on his name? Jiraiya, he's got him by the uh, like their arms tied together, and he's just wailing on him with the sword in black and white. It looks so good. It reminds me a bit of um, the Yu Yu Hakusho knife edge. I, I was thinking that exactly. I was like knife <laughs> edge death. Match. I was thinking <laughs> in my head. Knife edge death death um, I love it, and <laughs> it's so good. And he's just wailing on this dude. Uh, it was amazing. I was super glad when she knifed him. Um, but then they tried to make him, like, sympathetic. And I was like, no, dude. Like, that that's what I meant by it kind of weakened it a little bit for me mm. when they made him, like, just pure a piece of shit the whole time. Mm. Is when they were like, oh, let's look at the moon as you die. I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want him to have any happiness. <laughs> He deserves zero of this solace before he dies. No, he did. It's it's definitely a feeling of like, yeah. I get the so. The thing I liked is that the <clears throat> obviously the uh, knife edge death match when they start have when there any time there's two dudes and they're close together and they're just wailing the shit out of each other. I think that's the greatest thing. It's great here. It was great in Yu Yu Hakusho. It's great in wrestling when they do dog collar matches and that is the entire setup is that these two dudes fucking hate each other. Let's tie them together so that they can't escape each other and then it's just fucking wailing from that point on. Um, I love it. Uh, the thing with his specific backstory, it ends up being a case of like I don't think. It's similar to the last time we were in um, in this specific place, is that the dude is 100% an unredeemable monster. He is a monster. They're just showing you specifically how he became a monster, and the thing that they regret is that, like, well, the thing she says is that it's regrettable that you didn't share any of this, because we could have potentially have done something if you had actually had told me what was going on. And maybe we could have worked something together. They couldn't. They didn't do that. That didn't happen. And you're dead. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> like, there's no escaping the fact that you did this. Therefore, you die. You're dead. It ends. But she at least has a moment of looking at him specifically where she's just trying to be like, okay, um, the specific thing that you're going. It's basically one of those things was like, you're dying. It's already over. You're dead. There's nothing that we can do. His entire purpose was always been, like, I want to kill myself, but he wanted to kill himself by having someone actually be strong enough to kill him. Um, 
and stuff like that. It ends up becoming a thing of like, yeah, he is kind of a little bit too... I don't think it ends up working to make me sympathetic to this. It at least shows me specifically how he became the monster that he is now. And as a case of me showing how he became a monster, it at least does a case of like, I can understand why you're the way you are now. That doesn't excuse any of the things you've done, but I at least understand why you're the way you are. Um, and the thing that I really like is, as we're talking about to the black and white things, we talk about, um, in the beginning of the episode, they talk about finding Gintoki and he's a demon. Um, and we see this in the black and white scenes. And then the thing that they do, which is really cool, is that they play around with... it's The black and white is there, first of all, because it looks fucking rad and it looks cool. But they actually use that to show that um, specific things are changing between the two of them. So when the, Gintoki goes to fight... Uh, Jiraiya, it goes into the black and white, and it's specifically there because it actually is to show that Gintoki is not fighting him the way that he would a normal person. He's fighting him like he would back in his demon days, back when he was that person who was like, you know, going to corpses, finding corpses, and looting them. Something that he was able to avoid specifically when his master was there, and we see that actually specifically when, at one point when he is thinking back to his master. It's in black and white, but as he's, like, carrying him on his back, and they're talking about specifically carrying the burdens of what a master's supposed to do and stuff like that, it actually transitions into uh, normal colors. And that's to say, like, okay, the specific demon stuff, he was able to help him and actually get away from those tendencies. But we see here at the end of Jiraiya, Jiraiya's end did not end that way. He was not able to ever get rid of the fact that he was a monster and get rid of all that. He died the way that a monster or a demon should, which is death, which is the only way that that can end. So if it is trying to make him sympathetic, I don't think it's actually trying to do that. I think it ends up coming off as like, well, let's get sympathetic. And at that point, if they're trying to make me sympathetic, no, <laughs> I don't think he's a sympathetic in any kind of way. But in the case of, like, making a monster and showing how a monster is made and showing, like, specifically how it would have actually... That this is the... The actual tragedy of all this is that if he had actually believed in his student, because she actually did have the strength. She was looking for her to be strong. What he didn't realize is that she was already strong. She was just strong in a way that Gintoki isn't. That he mentioned specifically that him and Zanzo can... Like, there's a specific strength that comes from a person that isn't strength base and that's all that he was looking for what he didn't realize is that she was strong in a way that was completely different and that she was able to actually hold on to the pain of others and is able to actually help them out and that's the difference between protecting someone which is what he says that what he was doing is that he promised to protect her but he never was protecting her he was protecting himself but that's the difference between him and her is that she can actually protect other people and she actually has the capability to do that and she's able to shoulder burdens and it's something that where you can actually rely on people and do all this other stuff. I really wish I had seen this episode yesterday so I could get more thoughts. I have so many thoughts then and I can't <laughs> say them all because this episode is so fucking good. <laughs> it is a really good episode. It, one of the better uh, ending arcs for one of these little things of maybe like all of them. Yeah. Like, it's it's super good. It is super good. This is so good that they actually couldn't end the arc on here because it would have been such a downer of an ending. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, a little follow-up episode just yes, to, it, like, make you feel better. <laughs> just to make you feel better. That's how fucking, like, intense this was. That I realized is, like, typically when they do these episodes that are a follow-up, they're not a part of the main arc. This main arc was so fucking heavy with so many of the things that they had to do. They had to actually include the Jokey arc as a part of the main arc and be like, yeah, no, we need this. We just need a time to just be like, we're good here and we're done and stuff like that. But yeah, man, it was, it's really good. It's really fucking well done. This is definitely, it ends up being, like you said, one of my favorite endings to an arc, even though it is not the ending of an arc, but it is the end of this bad guy. Um, and yeah, a lot of things to think about. Like you, I'm similar in that if they try, if they tried to redeem Jiraiya, that's not happening. But the way that I see it, they're just trying to explain how he became a monster. And then there's just saying like, damn, that sucks, but you had to die. <laughs> the way your actions are too far. Maybe if you had not 
been such an asshole, maybe we could have looked at this something yeah, different. Yeah, you weren't a huge piece of shit the whole time. No, but you weren't. You weren't able to. He wasn't able to see that. He was. Too, he was too far gone. And that's the difference between him and Kentucky. Is that Kentucky was actually able to find someone to pull him out of that and not be that person. Basically, he's in a much better situation. But yeah, this. Oh, it's so good. Top to even the the fight itself. It's so good. It's 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 it has everything you would want. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh man. Yeah, it goes crazy. Oh, the fight is is incredible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The fight is incredible. The themes are on point. The art is on point. Everything is running at all cylinders for this one. And man, yeah, by the end of this, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna talk about this next week because before we do the because the next arc features the character pull arc, but we are gonna do. Uh, because it, it's been a while since we do it we'll have our own personal top five character polls for it but i definitely feel like by the end of this one sequoia definitely just like goes up multiple not i think she actually yes. might she actually might be my favorite female character which is insane because <laughs> they've yeah, had you pretty crazy because they it, it is insane like i have to r- look at my feelings that's why i'm not confirming it until next week but that is currently what i'm feeling after this specific arc it's like damn that hit when you get a good arc, it does so good for a character. It's insane. It hits so fucking well. But yeah, do you have anything else to say, Zen, about this episode? Uh, no. I, I, I mean, nothing that we haven't already said. It, it's just fucking amazing. As I've said before, From whenever start to finish. yeah, whenever we get to a good arc, it always ends with us going, "It's so fucking good." And mm-hmm. it, that's how I could go down. Even with me writing and looking at this Word doc, I had to, st- as I was writing it down in the Word doc, I was like, oh shit, it's getting to the point where we have to talk to Zen. I have more to say. I have so much. Oh, no, no, no. It, it, they're you're literally just watching yourself. There's so much that you can say about it. I feel free to say whatever you like about it because, oh my God, this is just, I can understand why a lot of people are just like, oh yeah, I can't wait for you to get to this arc because it's great. And I can also see why so many people also said when we started Gintama, just wait. If you enjoyed, mm-hmm. if you enjoyed this, <laughs> get ready for it. And yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely feeling that. And now let's move on to the ending of this arc, as we get to episode 181. Watch out for the set of, watch out for a set of women and a drink. <laughs> okay, so we go back to Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara is being prepared, uh, getting, re- is being repaired, uh, the Orozo, uh, oh, man, I never know how to pronounce their group name. How do you pronounce their group names then? Uh, the, the, the Ajabs group? I just call it the Ajabs Yeah, it's like easy, the, it's Ajabs. The, Yor- the Yorozuya, I think. Yeah, Yorozuya, but Ajabs. Ajabs group, uh, they're back with Hinawa and Seta. I forgot to mention, Seta actually had a really good joke in the first, uh, episode, which is probably the best joke of that episode, where, where his mom tells him, like, I think you should step out, dear. And he goes like, "Really? It's been so long since I last showed up, and now you're telling me to leave. I don't, <laughs> I don't get any screen time. People waited a full year for this shit. This is unbelievable. What I'm already, and he's like leaving and complaining, and they're talking about the main plot as he's like <laughs> complaining about his current stake. He's like, I waited an entire year for this. People were waiting to see. He's like, at least be thankful that people got to see you happy. <laughs> That's the best thing. <laughs> I thought that was really funny." He does show up in little parts of it, but I did think about that when they showed him. He was like, okay, time for you to leave. He's like, no, there's no way for a kid to get involved in this business. Um, um, they want to take Sequoia out to have some fun because it sounds like she's been depressed, basically, after what she's gone through. Um, they go to find her in a room. They try and go to her room and, like, invite her to Pachinko, and the Kentucky's, like, saying, hey, come out. I know you got money stashed up because you're not someone who good does it. Watch me spend it all on Pachinko. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he says, like, I guess she's not there. And he's like, whatever. See, we should just leave her alone, like I said. Let's get out of here. And then, boom, she ends up uh, finding her because she was getting out of the bathroom, and she gropes him. And then she does a very similar reaction to the first time, which is giving him a full-on suplex and, like, take him out. Um, she thanks them all for, um, she, she basically says, hey, thank you for worrying about me, but don't worry about it. I've just been too busy. Uh, and she says basically like, I've been helping even though they don't, I've been helping in secret, but making it look like I am not like I'm resting, but I'm actually helping is like, you're helping even in your like banged up condition. She was like, yeah, 
that's just the way I am. So there you go. Uh, so they end up leaving. Um, so they, they say, like, man, no matter what, she's just always going to work. So Hinawa comes up with the idea that, like, well, I know how we can actually get her to relax. What if we made it seem like her work today is to actually go and relax? So Gintoki at this point has gone off to Pachinko. Uh, Gintoki is actually brought back into Yoshiwara, and the hostesses are, like, making it seem like, oh, they want to be so thankful for the savior of Yoshiwara. Uh, he goes, like, even though I lost all my money in Pachinko, she's like, oh, for the savior, there's no need for money from him. <laughs> Just come along with a... They're very clearly egging him on for something, but he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm the savior. Whatever. Let's do it. Um... Uh, they they bring him into a room, and then uh, Sequoia is there dressed as, like, a courtesan, and she greets him. And she's surprised to see him. Gintoki is also shocked. Uh, while Shinpachi, Kagura, Hinawa, and Seita are spying on them. Um, and they get to the point where it's like, alright, you're... She was led to believe that she was here to get them to relax, and that was it. Um, she goes like, okay, you know what, fine. We're just gonna sit here and relax. Um, and so they sit down and decide to have a drink with each other. And she goes, like, I don't know how to do this. He's like, okay, let me show you how to do this. And he pours her a drink. Uh, it seems, like, a really nice as they just kind of, like, have a drink together. And it seems like she's finally relaxing. Uh, and then Kentucky is asking, he's like, hey, when are you going to pour me a drink? I want to drink, too. And then they reveal that Sequoia is actually dead drunk after, like, a taking a single shot. <laughs> and she becomes, not only is she a drunk now, she's an angry drunk. Yeah, she's, like, a pissed drunk. <laughs> she's so pissed. And she goes, like, oh, well, let's go. And she starts, like, using drunk logic against him. She's like, let's play rock, paper, scissors. Winner, uh, loser has to take off clothing. He's like, I'd please. this is actually the greatest MC. This is why he's my MC, because he goes like, she goes like, what, you don't want to see me naked? He's like, no, it's not that. It's that you're drunk. And I'm like, hell yeah, tell him, brother. <laughs> Never take advantage of a woman while she's drunk. Let's go. This is the kind of MC that we need for the new, for the new men, Zen. This is what we need. The perfect shining example. <laughs> exactly. This is the man that we need to lead us all to show this is the proper way to act. Yes, we want to see you naked. No, not in this kind of context. That's bad. <laughs> uh, she ends up using it against him. As... Consent king. <laughs> the consent king. Consent Toki. Let's go. Um, they end up playing rock, paper, scissors with each other. This is just an excuse for her to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> She, like, even when she wins, she, like, still, like, beats the shit out of him. Um, she says, like, look at that way, and she's, like, pointing him at the face. Is like, no, no matter what I do, I lose. <laughs> um, and then, at this point, Fikano has a really funny line where she's like, she really is an ordinary girl. Cut to her, like, fucking chugging the shit out of this drink. <laughs> and Shibaji beforehand says, like, what part of this is ordinary to you? Um, they decide to, uh, that's when, um, eventually Sequoia finds him outside and she invites him in and says, like, all right, it's not enough that I have him. When are you going to invite yourselves in there? So they end up having a good, fun time. They see that the, uh, the Odd Jobs crew has gotten beaten up because she's beat him up from the Rock, Paper, Scissors. <laughs> After she was done with Kentucky, she started beating up on them. That is the implied, uh, case here. Uh, it's late in the night, everyone is sleeping, Sequoia wakes up to go patrol Yoshiwara, um, Gintoki says, like, no matter what, so you're just gonna, you're, like, you can't even relax, you always have to kind of work, um, um, she starts talking about her specific scar, um, and she starts, like, he picks up what she's saying, is like, it doesn't, because I think she starts to wonder if, like, the specific life that she led down has been a lie because of the person that she, that she was with was only doing it to specifically, like, get her to eventually kill him. But he goes, like, D don't worry about it. You would have always, no matter what would have happened, whether he was involved in your life or not, you were always going to walk down this path because that is just who you are. And that itself is extremely beautiful, so you don't have to worry about that. Um... Because this is the path that you have chosen. That is always going to be the path that you were going to choose. Then she says, like, hey, thank you guys. And I, uh, she tells him, I'm glad to have met you all. And I think in a very, like, very cool moment, all, all three of them that have been beat up put up their hands and say, like, eh, 
It's what we are. <laughs> and it, they very, like, lazily just put up their hands and say, like, we acknowledge you, but we don't want to say anything because we're either beat up or drunk. Uh, and she goes off to go patrol Yoshiwara, and we end it with a shot of the moon, and the ED plays as we get a summary of the events of the arc, uh, everything that's gone on. And that's where I would say it would end, except for we actually end with a trailer for the Benny Zakura movie <laughs> coming soon <laughs> to a theater near you. And they talk about how specifically, um, what the hell was that? You didn't actually use movie from footage from the movie. You used the fake trailer that we used to troll last time. Uh, <laughs> and he goes like, eh, it's, it's fine. And then they talk about, like, you know what? The Congress says, like, you know what we should do? We should just, like, re-put the scenes. Fuck the fans. What? Is the, how are they going to know? Are they going to know anything, idiot? And then Shepardi goes, like, you can't do that. That's so bad. He goes, like, whatever. Gundam does it all the time. Uh, they, like, name three Gundam series. And then uh, Shepardi says, that's all Gundam. He's like, oh, man, you actually told them who did it. We're going to be in so much trouble from Warner Brothers. Uh, and it ends with them saying, like, hey... Uh, Benny Zakura, sorry that this is not a Hollywood production, <laughs> that it is us still doing all this. And that is where this arc ends, and that is the end of the Red Spider arc. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, banger arc. Banger arc. Uh, the beginning, I was not super sold on it. Um, after that first episode, though, I was just in there the whole time yeah I, I can understand that i the i think from from my moment is when he caught her spying and he threw the kunai that's when i was like holy shit because <laughs> when in the first episode it's like way at the end of the first episode after they do all their things and he like catches her he like looks at her gives her like this smile and then fucking throws a kunai directly at the spyglass i was like all right i want to see where this goes uh and ends up going into a great place and this final episode is a nice kind of like send off to an arc, like I said, that has been very heavy. And I think it ends up um, being nice and actually needed. Um, I like the comedy bits here. Thought it was very nice. Sequoia is a very good, like, <laughs> is a good, like, counter to a lot of what Kentucky does. <laughs> uh, yes. They play off each other extremely well. Um,. I like the bit where when she's going to go drink, uh, she she says like um, is like all right, let's get into this. I want to show my appreciation, and so like she puts on like the porn mood lighting and like slightly lowers her her dress and says like, is this good enough? He's like, what do you think I am, a corrupt politician? What kind of appreciation do you think? <laughs> i'm looking for here he's like well she they told me to give you service he's like not that kind of service don't do that put that back on <laughs> that, that, this is really funny um when she's just flat out drunk and beating the shit out of him is really funny because she literally says uh she's the way that she's like beating him up she's also giving him like drinks to wake him up <laughs> that's really funny uh the way she, like, tricks him uh, into admitting, like, after, like, that bit where she's, like, doing, like, hey, you don't want to see, he goes, like, no, please, you're drunk, you're gonna regret it, and she goes, like, ah, you're a pervert, <laughs> pervert, <laughs> she's, like, very clearly drunk and messing with him, is really funny, um, and, and I like the end bit where she explains about, like, the way she feels, you can tell that she has some specific vanity issues when it comes to her scar and the discarding of her womanhood and stuff like that uh stuff that they don't really get into too much in some cases it seems like they're trying to say like her like the closer that she gets to gintoki and the odd jobs crew the closer it is to like she no longer has to discard that and she doesn't, she doesn't need to discard that to be with them and be the protector that she is right now. And so she starts to feel this, like, a little bit more self-conscious about that. I think they say that in the beginning of the first episode where she's, like, where they tell her, like, hey, make sure to pretty yourself up before going. And she goes, like, I don't really see the point. And funny enough, that's also a funny moment in that first episode because when she peers up and he goes, like, you look as dull as always, huh? <laughs> like, Kentucky immediately, like, attacks her for the way she looks. Um... But yeah, it ends up being a very nice way of telling him, like, hey, don't worry about the specific things. The way, the kind of person that you are, this path that you chose, you were always going to walk it. So feel proud and don't regret anything and 
there's no shame to be had for what you are. You're extremely beautiful. And they're also right because it's a tiny scar. She's an extremely attractive woman <laughs> regardless of the scar, but, you know, whatever. I don't know enough about that, but uh, very nice stuff. Uh, uh, anything else to say, Zen? No, not really. It was good. I even thought, like, for what was ultimately a pretty silly episode, it was, uh, it was very cute at the end. Yeah. The, the, little, the little bits at the end were cute. They yeah. have good chemistry. I like they, those they two do. when they're on screen together. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if there's more going in. I'm curious to see if there's any more. If it's, if it's only going to be a thing of... I, I, like, I'm wondering of when they're making the episodes, when she starts to be in a little bit more of them. But maybe we'll see more in the next arc, which is the character pull arc. But yep, that's the end of the Red Spider arc. Uh, a great arc. I also should say that now that we're at the end of it, I actually also um, really like the ED as it plays over the kind of like... Um, the ending credits to show the bit of everything here. I actually really like the ED because it's very simple, the way it's kind of straight out set up. Um, in the ED, funny enough also, I should mention, uh, the strawberry milk has returned. We're talking about returning characters. <laughs> the strawberry milk has returned after not being seen after, after like the 10th episode. <laughs> Damn, now I kind of want strawberry milk. Strawberry milk bangs. It does. It really does. It made me want to get some strawberry milk. But I really like the setup of it of, like, Kentoki going, like, he sees something out into the horizon, so he starts walking towards it. And then he gets joined up with the other members of the of the cast as they kind of walk beside him. And then he has, like, a moment where he looks out, and he looks and sees all the people that he's kind of brought with him. And he kind of smiles, and he stops walking towards the light specifically. And he just, like, enjoys the moment and he enjoys hanging out with his friends. I think it's really nice. And it really kind of sets the tone for... I, I made fun of it for that one episode where it was, like, extremely dark and then they cut to the ED. And it was a real, like, jumping moment. But I think it ends up serving for the ultimate, um, good, what they're going for here. Which is that, uh, there are wonderful days ahead, Zen. And they are here. You, they're gonna be here. And they're gonna get there. All you need to do is go through all the terrible shit that has gone through. In their case, it the is... awful nightmare shit. Yes, but eventually the nightmares will end, and when you look back, you'll see all the friends that you kind of made along the way, and you're just going to be like, you know what? I don't need to walk towards this dream I have. I can just actually stay here and be with these dudes, because these dudes are pretty funny. <laughs> I can be here and enjoy the, the dudes I've made along the way, and, you know, just kind of enjoy the life that I have right here, which is what Gintoki is trying to do for the most part, of Gintama. And as we've gone in more and more bits of his backstory, you get, especially with that fucking scene of him in the fucking the battlefield graveyard, and he's, like, literally going through corpses, and he's, like, he has a sword that has literally just been you. He literally just took that sword from a corpse, and he's gone through so much shit, and now he's just kind of being with his friends, and he's enjoying it. I don't know. I, I, think, it ends, I think it ends up being very cute and good. And I think it ends up, of course, being better than the OP, which, again, the OP has a really weird cutoff. <laughs> it, it really is yeah, jarring. It, 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 yeah, it, it's so jarring. Like, every time it just stops, I'm like, dude, Yeah, fuck. they could have picked just a little bit better of, a, of like, an endpoint. Like, I don't understand why they did it the way they did, but, you know, it is what it is for the most part. Anyway, let's talk about next week, because next week there will be no Shonen Archive. I'm sorry to say. There will be the, the zero shown in archive next week. Why? Because, one, my dad's coming home. <laughs> next week is the 22nd, which is the day before Thanksgiving. And in general, uh, I think Zen also has to get stuff ready for his Thanksgiving outings as well. So we'll be taking the, a break off next week. But then we will come back with um, more Gintama. And the Gintama that we'll be going through is going to be episodes 182 to... 187 um yeah that's the way it ends up being that is because 182 to 184 is the character pull arc which is a three episode arc i assume this is a silly pull this is a silly arc <laughs> after <laughs> after red spider oh, I'm gonna... yeah, I, I let a little bit of it autoplay because i was just watching it like while i was doing a bunch of other stuff to keep uh -huh. up with my day and it was another like like the end of the last episode where they're uh like silly little paper cutouts and stuff all right um, it, it's another one of those fair so. enough okay so that's a silly arc so we can do those three episodes followed up by 185 which is a um two-parter um one being a fill-in the other one not 
And then it's followed up by another arc, so I figured we may as well just include that one for it, which is the Rokoku, Rokaku? Rokaku arc, which is episodes 186 to 187. So it'll be six episodes for two weeks from now. Not next week, two weeks from now. That should be definitely yep. possible. Um, and then we'll eventually get to the point where things are going to... There'll be another f- one, two... It'll be another five episodes. And then from there... I will actually be another... Actually, it won't be five episodes. It'll be... It'll be a little bit more, because we're going to get to eventually an arc that is going to be a full-on one, two, three... Four, five. Ah, that's going to be really weird, actually, now that I think about it. So we need to actually probably discuss how we're going to do it. Um, I wouldn't mind hearing from other people. I'm okay with doing episodes 200 to 205. But halfway into it is where we're going to experience the... Okay, you know what we should do? Actually, yeah, okay, I figured it out. I figured it out right now. So... (laughs) The way we're going to do it, the reason is is because it gets a little bit funky and weird, and you'll explain why. Uh, feel free to leave comments about how you feel about how we're handling. But like I said, we're going to do those six episodes, and then we're going to do uh, an additional one, two, three, four, five. And then we will uh, – no, we have to actually do seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> and then it will get into the Diviner arc, which is a five-episode arc. And then we'll have a, go- a cool down moment where we'll do the Santa arc, which is episodes 200 and 201. And then we will talk about Yuriniku Gintama-san, which is where we will watch the OP and EDs for the, um, the Gintama rerun. This is where the break where there was no new Gintama anime for an entire year. And we'll talk about that and we'll talk about uh, this. Because they actually, even though they're rerun episodes, and obviously we will not be watching these 51 episodes again... Uh, we can at least watch the EOPs and EDs, which are completely original to this series and not featured anywhere else, I think. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah, very much. Right. Yeah, I've, again, we talked about this last episode. I've never heard of someone doing reruns in this style before. <laughs> they typically just do reruns. It's uh, fascinating, and I've tried to look up for more information about it. But it's very hard to actually find information about specifically why they were doing this at this time. Other than they wanted to wait a year. Because we're currently, as where Gintama is, they're caught up to the manga. So they actually waited a year so that they could catch up and they could actually adapt stuff. So there wouldn't be that much filler in it and stuff like that. And then, you know, and then we'll actually get proper started with what is considered on Crunchyroll Season 2 of Gintama. <laughs> and we will have officially ended... It's crazy that it's not even... Season two, technically, yeah. Yeah, no. Even though on I think the Gintama Wiki we are considered being in season four on Crunchyroll itself, it actually considers us all one giant season, and then it also That's cons- really weird. It yeah, it's very weird. And then they consider well, doesn't Gintama randomly like get quote unquote canceled and then come back a bunch maybe that's how they're dividing it up yeah that, like when serialization stops and starts again it's a new season or something yeah things so, some funky things happen and we'll talk about that more when it comes up but yeah there's a lot of like weird there's a lot of like like even i've talked about i've, I've looked at this but i have no idea how we're going to cover the silver silver soul arc zen because it ends in the movie so we'll talk about this arc, mm. but the arc will not be done. And this arc has, let me see, let me do the final count. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. There are twenty-seven episodes in this arc and it is not the end of the arc it is in gintama okay. it is in gintama the final which is a movie <laughs> hmm okay uh well we'll have to break it down some yeah we will and then and then we'll maybe we do like four episodes divide it up and then we finish with the movie maybe listen, listen I, I i i know you can hear me the super dedicated person who is always here for every show to Dark Kai. <laughs> Hal Nix. <laughs> Please tell us how we would specifically Help break us. this down. I know you're the, the first person who's ever going to reach the end of this. I'm almost positive. But anyone else that can tell us how they we think we would handle it down, feel free. 
because uh, I've been looking at it and I've been like <laughs> hand in my head going, what are we going to do <laughs> for this arc that is tw- over 20 episodes big and does not have the ending of the arc in it? <laughs> We'll figure it out. Obviously, the movie will be its own thing, but yeah, we'll, we're going to have to break it up and do stuff like that and uh, talk about it. But also, I feel like once we're in the final arc, are we going to be able to actually stop ourselves from watching it? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, it, it's going to be hard to be like, once we know that we're in the ending, are we just going to be like, okay, so now we're just going to watch it right <laughs> and then <laughs> we'll deal with the consequences of our actions later who knows we'll be we're, we're getting there eventually though uh, we are technically one two three three seasons away from that um we have to start worrying about that on episode uh 342 which is still a decent bit away a hundred and uh, yeah a hundred something episodes anyway that's the end of the Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, if you want more Zen content, you can go to uh, Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about all the manga in Shonen Jump that he is currently reading <laughs> and gives you all the great breakdowns of everything. Uh, and I assume also has jokes. I've never actually watched the show. I, I would assume I would love it, but I'm we, actually... We joke sometimes. Sometimes we just get sad. It, it depends. <laughs> is that you which is just guys then it's just getting sad every week yeah kinda <laughs> uh i mean what a, there's so much funny comedy bits happening now then <laughs> you don't appreciate the new happy comedy bits going on yeah the, yeah a lot of yeah yeah the silence is yeah, great sweet, you hit me up like uh when gentoki was fondling the boobs that's how deep and silent that silence was <laughs> that's how long the pause was before answering back we could have i could have had i could have put in bling bling, like little blinking sounds to go with what <laughs> and if you want more me content you can always go to my channel where i do stuff and then monday and you can also go to my twitch funny enough because now that we've actually got a pretty good rhythm of playing games on monday we are planning to beat Pokemon TCG um, for the Game Boy this Monday, because I don't have work that day, so I'll be able to power through the ending of that game. <laughs> and then we will move on to the Japanese exclusive. That's right, more Pokemon TCG for the Game Boy. It never ends. <laughs> uh, you're damn right it never ends, because it's right. the best. It is pretty good. Oh, so, oh, man, Pokemon TCG is so good. And yeah, you can... Uh, I have plenty of stuff on my channel, typically. Uh, I have to figure out what I'm going to do for Thanksgiving, because it's very hard with recording with my dad. If you think my mom was kind of loud when she was, like, watching uh, sports, my dad is just naturally that loud. And he might... <laughs> yeah, he might actually fall asleep, and in which case, even if the door's closed, there's no escaping them snores. It is uh, it is heavy and it is intense when the man wants... He's a hard-working man, and when he goes to bed, he goes to fucking bed. <laughs> he needs that sleep. <laughs> Work hard, eat hard, play hard, sleep hard. Exactly. That's my dad's a modem operandi. He watches uh, Rush Hour for what is... Rush Hour 2 for which, what is likely the 127th time. Laughs at all <laughs> the same jokes that he's seen beforehand. Eats a sandwich of some kind or some kind of food and then fucks off to bed for like the next 12 hours until <laughs> he needs to wake up again. That's the that's the sleep of the just. That's the sleep of the hardworking man <laughs> who has a, a break and can finally hang out with his family after being gone for an entire month. So he enjoys it. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of the show and archive for this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, you can show support by leaving a like and commenting, but you never have to worry about that stuff because my channel is supported by Fago. And yeah, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out!